Hi everybody, it's Sunday and it's time for my mental health vlog. And uh, if you celebrate Easter in any way, shape or form, um, or Passover or any of the other uh, holidays that are happening around this time of year, um, happy holiday of your choice. Happy Easter. Um, this has been a great week and not a lot of exciting stuff has happened, but there were some definite moments this week of self-growth and clarity and confidence and things that I never knew I was some of you even some things I never really knew that I was struggling with so and I had to really go back and analyze a couple of things so a, a lot of a lot of a lot of growth this week um, Uh, I'll get some of the smaller stuff out of the way. Uh, um, I had my son on Friday night. Uh, we gave him a little Easter basket and stuff. Because, um, you know, I wasn't going to see him today. Uh, which is okay. Easter's not a holiday. I I, I really celebrate. I, I hard to believe, I know. Um, and uh, just normal time with, this, with our, you know, with, with my son and... Uh, uh, we did end up going to a wake on Saturday for um, a friend of my boyfriend's family that they're very close. Their two families are very, very close and there was a loss in there. So we went and showed our respects. Um, I had not been to a wake for someone that I wasn't related to before. And I realized that and I'm like, oh, and I didn't wear black. And my son and I were the only two people <laughs> there that didn't wear black. So I felt like it was a little bit of a faux pas that, that we didn't know, but it was, um, they were very, they were, they were very happy to see us and, and, and us showing our respects. But what I loved most of all was how my son acted, um, because he was very much like, how long are we going to be there? Who died? You know, blah, 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 blah. So he obviously didn't want to go. Um, but he, he wore the nice shirt that I picked out for him. And I told him, it's like, if you want to sit in the the, the dining room with your phone and your headphones on because it's just a bunch of adults standing around you're more than welcome to I said but when we meet you know when we're, when we're saying hello to people you know especially you know Mr. Mr. so-and-so um, make sure you say that I'm very sorry for your loss and he was he didn't put his headphones in he kept his phone in his pocket the entire time um, he stayed pretty close um, but whenever someone came around and and shook his hand or whatnot. He was, he would extend his hand. He would say, I'm very sorry for your loss. Like I was super impressed with how my son chose to behave at, at this very serious event. Um, it showed a lot of growth for him, I think, which I'm here for. I really enjoyed that. I, I did enjoy it. It's awake. Um, but it was, it was very nice. And to have so many people because most of the, the these people met him at the rehearsal dinner that we went to in October for the family. And um, everyone was just so complimentary on his manners and his, um, his stature and his behavior. And as a parent, okay, I know that whenever someone told me that my mom did a good job, I reported it back to her because I know it made her feel good. So when someone tells me that they're impressed by my son's behavior or my son in any way, shape or form, although I don't take onus of that because he's his own person, but there is a certain parental pride that one does take when someone says something so complimentary about your child. But he's, he's such an amazing kid. He impresses me every single day. He really does. <sighs> Um, and then he went home Friday, on Saturday evening to spend the rest of the weekend with his dad and uh, his dad's boyfriend. So um, I think they're doing the really, really fun thing of cleaning up his room today. So mm, it's kind of like an Easter egg hunt, but for dirty socks, I guess. I don't know. Um, this week, uh, I worked on a few projects for my, my, my Burley Bottom store. Um, which is getting a lot of attention and a lot of traction. And I, I, I couldn't be happier with how it's going. And again, I'm having an insane amount of fun with it. <laughs> um, and uh, I have a friend of mine um, in the Northwest that 
I was talking to who is a um, F to M transgendered man, man, and I wanted to do something that was uh, representing that subgroup that I'm adjacent to but not part of, and uh, I wanted them to feel represented and, and and put something out there that they could they could feel proud of. So I, I worked with him on a few designs, and um, <clears throat> that was very that was that was great for me because I was. I was understanding that I have a um, cis privilege, you know, I was born male and I was born into the correct gender, not everyone is. Um, so I wanted to make sure that anything that I was doing for that community, it's not for me to say whether or not it's appropriate or representative or powerful or, or, or impactful or even appropriate. Um, so I was very happy to work with, with someone who I known through pretty much his entire journey um, to get his insight for that. Um, that was very eye-opening and very cool and, and the fact that he was appreciative of how respectful I was being for the community that I wanted to promote and empower but that I'm not a part of. So it's not in the same way that it's not my, my way to say what is offensive for another race. It is not my way to say what is offensive for uh, any other my minority group that I'm not part of so that was um, I was I was proud of myself for not to, for realizing that I shouldn't be the one to make those calls so um, and funny story uh, I was sending him some of the designs I was working on and he's like my roommate loves your stuff and he wanted to meet you so he, he started a group chat with his roommate his roommate looks really, really familiar. You know, keep in mind, this is someone that I was in the Seattle men's course with, and since then he has moved to Portland. <clears throat> so he sends, he starts this group chat with his roommate, his new roommate. I'm like, his roommate looks really, 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 really familiar. I said, did you ever live in Houston? Did you move to Portland from Houston? He's like, yeah. I'm like, uh-huh, yeah, we've met. It was someone that I had cheated on my ex with. So, um, a nice guy, you know, not his fault, but um, it was just a uh, very, 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 very small world moment. And I'm used to those because, you know, my mother knows everyone, so small world moments were not uncommon growing up. But having one like that where someone that I had hooked up with years ago moved across the country and as roommates with a friend of mine that I used to be in chorus with in a different city. That's some small world shit. <laughs> so it was very just kind of like mind blowing for me. Um, okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about my self-confidence and sexual freedom that I'm experiencing. Um, my growth has been immense. And I do want to clarify one thing. Last week I made a comment about um, my boyfriend and I uh, uh, playing with someone and I and there was some concern that I was going down the same path that I did with my ex. Please note that one, the situation is 110% different and it's something that I have been communicating closely with my therapist and my, my boyfriend and my sponsor and other members of my group. So. Please note that the um, that the decisions that we are, are making and doing are not things that we've taken lightly, and they're things that we've thought very hard about. Um, I'm also experiencing a level of self-confidence that I honestly don't think I've ever had. I have feigned self-confidence a lot through my life. Um, but last night I went to a underwear party at a bar and it was like a gear underwear you know, party. And I am 44 years old. I, I am a 44 year old gay man who has never been to an underwear or circuit party before. Um, that was new, but I ended up dancing uh, in a jockstrap and harness in a bar with my boyfriend. And I have never been self-confident enough to do that. It was very freeing. And it wasn't like I was, I, w I did it for me, 
I didn't care if anyone else looked or saw or stared. I mean, there were a couple that evidently did, my boyfriend told me, but I wasn't dressed like that for them. I was dressed like that for me. And it was really incredibly freeing. And one of the best moments of the night is, um, we were there with some friends and they are friends that there is zero, zero chance of any physical, sexual connection there, period. Never gonna happen. But they commented on, and this, this sounds a lot more shallow than it is, but let me get there. They commented on the fact that I have a nice ass. My ass is honestly the last little bit of body dysmorphia that I was holding on to. Um, my ex had a name for my ass that was very insulting. And um, I was convinced that um, it was ugly and really shouldn't be shown off. Uh, he called it a vagina butt just because the way it, it wrinkled and, and sagged in certain areas. Um, and that stuck. Um, and I've, you know, people I've dated or been in relationships with or were trying to get into my pants or vice versa, um, I've heard comments from them before. And I've always just kind of considered them, you know, it's a social construct. You comment on someone's ass whether it's cute or not. But to hear it last night from someone that had zero interest in anything physical or romantic or, or whatever. It was, um, I think I reacted very weird to them because I was having a hard time processing the compliment, which I, I struggle processing compliments, but, um, it really was kind of, it really did help me shake off that last little bit of, um, discomfort I have with my own body. And that was, that was right in line with the journey that I'm having and this overall self-confidence that I have found in myself that's authentic and not, look at me, look how sexy I can be. Please find value in me. That's, that's not what this was. It was, look at me confident enough to be in my own skin to be this free. So I know a lot of you won't understand that. And especially if you're, if you're not in the, the gay community, the, the whole concept of underwear party might seem like one giant orgy, but it's, it's, that's not what it's about. But it's, uh, it was very freeing last night. And it, the, it was a boost to my self-confidence that I was able to process and give myself but the comment from my friends about my ass really was just the, the cherry on top. My boyfriend's like, I tell you that all the time. I'm like, yeah, but I feel like you have to. So it was, it was very nice to get that authentic compliment. So that, that made me feel great. And I'm recording this early because Houston has an event every Easter and I've never been able to go to it called Bunnies on the Bayou. And um, we are gonna go and we're gonna have a great time. And I have sunscreen because I'm, I'm white as a bunny. <laughs> and um, it's gonna be a good time, but I'm probably gonna be in no condition to do my vlog this evening. I've already taken tomorrow off from work. It's a pre-planned hangover. <laughs> so I hope that you all um, have a wonderful Easter if, if you're celebrating with family or with friends or even if you're just staying home and watching TV. I, I hope that your day is peaceful and I hope that you have the opportunity to really look inside yourself and see what your insecurities are. Maybe figure out why you're insecure about them and, and um, losing that last little bit of body dysmorphia was was wonderful so compliment your friends if it's something that you're you fully and honestly believe because you never know 
what those people are struggling with and you never know how much your kind words can affect them, especially when they're authentic. So don't be fake, be you. Be unapologetically you, as I like to say. I love you guys. I have been on an amazing journey for these past several years and um, I've loved it. I've loved being able to go back and look at my videos and see where I was and where I am. And I'm not the same person. But I love who I am. I love who I am for the first time that I can recall. I love my life. I love my journey. I love the work that I've done. I'm so proud of myself. So check on your friends, make sure they're doing okay. Check on your loved ones, make sure they're doing okay. Check on yourself because that is honestly the most important thing that you can do. And work on yourself. Because as I said last week, damn it, the work is worth it. All right, guys. Happy Easter. I'll see you next week. Bye.